Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, we had a really nice weekend last weekend. Um, Saturday was gorgeous, got slightly above uh, 80 Fahrenheit. Matter of fact, it, uh, I think it topped out at 82 degrees Fahrenheit, which is interesting because 82 degrees Fahrenheit is 28 degrees Celsius. So the digits are flipped. Um, there is actually one other point on the two scales where that is true, at least above freezing, and thought about that, below freezing, but um, the other pair would be 61 and 16. 61 Fahrenheit is 16 degrees uh, Celsius. Anyway, in other news, uh, evidently there is a bobcat running around Oak Park, Illinois. Uh, it was in the paper. They called it a lynx. Evidently somebody in the health department here called it a lynx, and so that's what they ran with. Um, bobcats, of course, are in the genus lynx. Uh, they're lynx rufus. There are four lynx species in the world. The bobcat, the Canada lynx, the Eurasian lynx, and the Iberian lynx. But uh, never really heard anybody call a bobcat a lynx before. I guess you can. But um, especially it's on security cameras. I haven't seen it yet. So maybe somebody saw a big cat and thought it was a bobcat. Who knows? But with spring, you know, we get wildflowers. We get migratory birds. Um, things to take pictures of while we're out taking hikes and I thought I'd talk a little bit today about doing that sort of photography which would also involve close-up photography um, and you don't I mean a lot of people think oh you know you need to go out and buy a macro lens to do that and that's rather expensive and I'll tell you I've owned macro lenses they're always stunningly sharp doesn't matter who makes them they're I haven't run into a bad one, um, but I've always owned the 100 millimeter uh, macros. Oh, I had the 50 millimeter Canon compact macro as well. Still, really sharp lens, but they cost a lot, and you don't use them a lot. And I think today, with the close focusing abilities of a lot of zooms, and especially kit zooms. Uh, they all seem to be able to focus really close. You may not need a dedicated macro lens for a lot of what you do. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about those of us using the Lumix system. If you buy a Lumix camera like this G95 or the GX9, you get the Lumix 12 to 60 millimeter zoom. And this will focus very close. As a matter of fact, it's 60 millimeters. It's going to focus down to um, 0 0.29, 0 0.25 meters and uh, 0.82 feet. And 0.82 feet is uh, just under 10 inches. So you can get really close. Now, if you look at this lens, when you extend it out, that, that a uh, little under 10 inches focus distance is from the focal plane of the lens. So the focal plane on the lens is actually marked and it's right next to the red video record button. It's not easy to see because it's just embossed black, but that's where the focal plane of the lens is. So that focus distance on your lens is telling you how far from that point your subject is. Then you can see that 10 inches is going to put your subject really close to the front of the lens. So, of course, with flowers, maybe not that big of a deal, but with some insects, they're going to run or fly away, right? So why would you want to go to the extra expense of doing something else? And that something else in a lot of people's case in the Lumix system would maybe be the 45 to 150 millimeter uh, zoom, which is uh, inexpensive, high quality. Now this lens close focuses at 150 millimeters only down to three feet or slightly under a, a meter. So you're not going to be that close. Um, however, as I mentioned in a previous video, I use a Canon 500D 
close-up attachment in the 52 millimeter thread. Uh, and 500D is not to be confused with the Canon Rebel model. Uh, that's also a 500D. And this simply screws onto the front of the lens like a filter. And this is a two diopter equivalent if you're looking at other uh, types of, of uh, close-up lenses. Uh, 500D is uh, a two diopter equivalent. So if you're, uh, I'm, not, I'm not even sure Canon makes these anymore because they seem to be hard to find. But um, you can find them on eBay if you, if you hunt. So that little close-up lens makes a big difference, as we will see. The added benefit is, even though it's getting the magnification higher and you a bit closer, you don't get anywhere near as close as you do with the 12 to 60. The other thing is, because you're using a longer focal length, the angle of view is narrower, so you're able to cut out more of the background um, when you're focusing in. So. Um, that's cool as well. Anyway, what I did was I went out into our backyard with this uh, camera and these two lenses and uh, this Canon 500D close-up attachment. And we have <clears throat> outdoor lighting, so strings of lights. So I went out and took some pictures uh, with the 12 to 60 at its closest focusing distance, with the 45 to 150 at 150 and closest focusing distance, and then also with the 50D. And then I went into my office with a tape measure and kind of, this was loosey-goosey, but I put the tape measure so that the end of it was right near the uh, focal plane mark and then focused each of these thing, two lenses to the closest focusing distance on the scale on the tape measure. So I did that with the 12 to 60 at 60 millimeters and the 45 to 150 at um, 150 millimeters with the close-up lens on it. So let's take a look at that and uh, I will be back with a follow-up. So here are our strings of backyard lights on this dreary day. And uh, what I'm going to show is uh, first a photo taken with a 12 to 60 millimeter lens at 60 millimeters, closest focusing distance, which is uh, just under a foot. It's about just under 10 inches. So you can see it gets pretty close. So that might work for most people most of the time. Uh, you get kind of a wide view of the background. Now, if we switch to the 45 to 150, this is at three, uh, 150. Uh, closest focusing distance, which is about three feet. Now, if I put the Canon 500D close-up attachment on, I get much, much closer. And the view, uh, the angle of view is narrower, so there's less distraction in the background. Additionally, there's uh, a little bit more than a foot of room between the front element of the lens and uh, the subject. So, uh, any skittish insects are not going to be as intimidated as they would be with the 12 to 60. So here I'm back in my office with a tape measure, and this is the 12 to 60 at 60 millimeters at its closest, closest focusing distance. And as you can see, it focuses right at about just under 10 inches. Looks like a little bit, or yeah, you know, looks like right around nine and a half inches. Now, if we switch over to the 45 to 150 with the Canon 500D close-up attachment, you'll see here it's focused at <clears throat> between 16 and 17 inches, so about one foot five inches. And you can see the depth of field is quite, quite narrow. But you also notice that the angle of view here is very narrow as well. So you can see the tape measure and not much else. Whereas if you look at the um, back at the 12 to 60 image, you get a very wide field of view. So I Hopefully this was really informative to you. You can kind of see the differences. You, as I said, may be able to get away with just the 12 to 60 for your close-up work. If not, it's not going to cost you a whole lot to get an additional lens like the 45 to 150, and the advantage to having this lens is it is more of a telephoto lens. You can get perhaps some decent results with larger birds, and I'm going to show a little slideshow 
of images I've taken over the past few days in our local forest reserve, Thatcher Woods. So close-ups of wildflowers, close-up or uh, some telephoto shots of deer. Uh, I also used my 100 to 300 for that. And so in the slideshow, I have labeled everything so that you know what's what. Um, but, uh, you know, it's really nice to have an area within, I don't know, 15 minutes of here where you can go out and do nature photography. As a matter of fact, uh, if you all have a place that's near to you, uh, where you go out and take nature photographs without having to travel long distances, um, I think that's something you might want to share. So put those thing, those down in the comments. Uh, maybe link to some photos that you've taken uh, close to home that you're proud of, and let everybody see what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> anyway, here is that little slideshow. Uh, again, I labeled everything, so uh, hopefully this inspires you to enjoy the spring and go out and take pictures. If you have any questions or comments, pop them down below. If this was helpful to you in any way, hey, hit that like button. That's a big help to me. If you have subscribed so far, I really appreciate it. Um, it's really great. Every time I take a look, I get a few more subscribers, so that's cool. I'm Todd Banner, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.